Okay, so one of the questions is you talk a little bit about uh, this sort of refinement of attention. I was wondering if you could elaborate for us a little bit about um, what the refinement really refers to. Is it sort of the, the you talk a little bit about um, a dropping off of sort of the conceptual level of, of processing and moving more towards a, a heightening of the sensory ex uh, processing experience. In modern cognitive psychology, it's a commonplace to refer only to five or six types of perception, and they're all physical, and they're all looking outwards into the world or into the body. But Buddhism has known for 2,500 years that we have another door of perception of immediate access to certain aspects of reality, and that is mental perception, mental perception. So the refinement of attention entails, first of all, calming the mind so there's a sense of ease, of relaxation, and then bringing about a greater coherence of attention so that it can be focused in a sustained fashion. Again, like setting a, a telescope on a very firm tripod. So wherever you direct it, you can, you, it doesn't wobble, it's not gyrating around, over the, uh, around the sky, but you can sustain it upon your, your chosen object for a sustained period, and then again, like a telescope, you want high magnification, high resolution, sharp focus. And so these are exactly the qualities of attention that are used, and why this is so, I believe, indispensable for a full scientific study of the mind is that when you're studying the brain, all that you directly perceive are brain functions. You don't see any mental or subjective experience whatsoever. Likewise, when you're studying behavior, robots d d display behavior. At this point, I have no reason to believe they're conscious, but they certainly behave. So do computers, artificial intelligence devices, and so forth. But that's all you get when you're looking outwards. You're simply looking at physical phenomena. The only direct access we have that is perceptual, observational, empirical access we have to mental phenomena is inward. I call it introspection, call it mental perception directed in upon the mind. But normally, of course, our attention tends to be very wobbly, excited, agitated, distracted, or just falling into dullness and laxity. So therefore, the untrained mind is really not a very useful instrument or a reliable instrument for making veridical, penetrating, sophisticated, rigorous observations of the mind. This is a great weak point of the Western mind sciences it's a great strength of Buddhism. On the other hand, Buddhism has no quantitative behavioral science and no brain science at all. So it's not one-upmanship, it's one is simply better than the other. So we shouldn't think along those lines, but rather think in terms of complementarity. And that is the great strengths of Buddhism are exactly not the strengths of Western mind sciences on the whole, and vice versa. So, but if observation of the phenomena that you're trying to understand is a key point of the natural sciences across the boards, the science of the mind is the one branch of natural science which has dropped the ball on that. Mm -hmm. Developed in the West, no rigorous means of observing the mind directly. Buddhism has this in spades. And so it's just a natural fit. It's not competition, it's not religious war, it's not even bringing religion together with science. It's bringing empiricism together with empiricism and encouraging everybody involved to use, as I said yesterday, Buddha's razor to yeah. shave off as many of our uncorroborated assumptions, and I'm referring especially to physicalist, materialistic assumptions, that the mind is nothing more than. We don't know that. We so, know so little about the mind, the mind-brain interactions, it's way, too pre it's way premature to say, oh, we know the mind is nothing more than a function of the brain. The mind is the brain. The mind is nothing more than an emergent property of the brain. That might one day be demonstrated. Not yet. <laughs> and therefore, if you want to understand the mind, let your primary mode of investigation be observe it. Just as Galileo, unlike the, the astrologers who are looking at all kinds of terrestrial correlates, don't just look at neural correlates and think the end game is there. That if you explain the mechanisms, the neural mechanisms, somehow it's eureka. Now you've really understood the mind. It's balderdash. You've really understood the brain with some derivative insight into the mind. But if you're really interested in the mind, for heaven's sakes, observe it and do it well. And that's where this very rich collaboration can open up. That's great. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You.